Well, everybody, another month down, so here are all the games that I beat for July. So the very first game that I beat for the month was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. Absolutely great game. I played this, I watched other people stream, it's got classic feel with a little modern twist. I love that the background was beautifully done, I love that the characters were pixelated to where it looks like an old game from like Turtles in Time, kind of like 16-bit era, but you also get a twist to everything. The only thing I will say is it's a little too easy. Every mode, no matter what you play, I've seen people say that it's just too easy. and. I agree. I, I feel like there should have been an option, like an option you click if you would like to try it with just just the amount of lives you have and, you know, not enough taunts so that you can just burn through everything. But if that wasn't the case, it would be a 10 out of 10. But I still give it a solid 8. It's a great game. Definitely try it if you haven't. And if you have Game Pass, it's free. So download it and play it as much as you can. After that, I decided to go back to a classic, and that is Resident Evil Code Veronica X. I played and beat this on the Dreamcast a long time ago, and decided I want to go through a few more Resident Evil games before the new remake comes out, and I do that every now and then. So I had played this, and I remember it being very difficult, and it's still very difficult. Even though I know somewhat where I was going, I kind of remembered everything. It's still got that moment of like, ooh, crap, I, I need to do this. But I haven't played the HD version very much because it doesn't feel the same to me. It just doesn't feel the same. Like, a lot of people keep asking me, why do I go back to the PS2 versions? They change things. It's not very, like, you don't notice it right away, but it's subtle. So if you haven't played the original PS2 one, try it out for sure. And I get it. Not everybody's going to like this one. But it's one of the OG... Still with tank controls, and if you need help, they do have guides, and you can find the PDFs online. The next game I played was also on Game Pass, and that is Trek to Yumi. I hope I am saying it correctly. This game was very intriguing to me. I saw the trailer, and it basically is kind of like an old black and white movie played in a video game style. So you are a samurai who goes to get revenge on a gentleman and doing so causes your town, your city, to be vulnerable. And they take that opportunity to send out other men to go destroy it. You come back and you see that it's in utter chaos and you're trying to help get everybody to safety as much as possible. And everybody's blaming you as they should because you should have stayed and left it alone. And there's a twist. I'm not going to ruin the twist, but there's a moment where you see everything change and warp. And so you don't know if he's hallucinating or if he's in a dream world or if he's actually dead. But it does change and it's really cool. I like that little animated action and seeing everybody in like a ghost mode and stuff like that. But I recommend this one as well. So far, can't complain. I had three great games. After that, I decided to play Mortal Kombat 4 for the N64. Never actually played it on the N64. I played it in the arcade a bunch of times anytime I'd see the cabinet. It's funny. I remember seeing the people uppercutting the arm and the arm breaking at the elbow. And I was like, that is a cool animation. It's ridiculously corny. It's more corny than the first three. Um, this is where the series starts taking a twist and change and being extra cheesy. I don't mind it. It's not the best Mortal Kombat game out there. There's a lot of people who will say it's first or second or third. Um, yeah, it's it's not going to be in your top three list, but if you want a corny storyline and seeing everything, it's fun times. So just accept the cheese factor and you'll like it. So the next game that I decided to play was Donga Rampa Trigger Havoc Happy something Trigger Happy Havoc Anniversary Edition. It's a tongue twister for me. I don't know why. But basically, it is a game where you're a student, you go to the school, you're invited, you ex get accepted, and you start going through the day, and then all of a sudden you pass out. You don't know what happened. You wake up, you are in a s the same school, but it looks completely different. It's boarded up, 
windows are boarded up, everything's boarded up, and you're like, what the hell's going on? This shit's got real. What's going on? And so you start witnessing murders, and it's kind of like Clue. You have to figure out who did it because a teddy bear shows up and says, hey, everybody, we're playing a game. You got to figure out who did it. If you don't, everybody dies, and then you have to start over again. So you collect, you investigate, kind of like L.A. Noir. You investigate, you look for for clues, you run around the school, you try to find out everything, and you're you're limited to the first floor and the first part. Then every other murder gets to the next level, next level, next level, next level, and you're trying to figure out who the teddy bear is, who the people are that are killing each other, why, what's going on, and it's got a twist at the end. I'm not gonna ruin it, so it's kind of chaotic. It's not for everybody. I understand why. I wouldn't have paid for this, being honest. It's a game that it's good. But it's very narrative, too narrative, like too much talking sometimes. Sometimes I'm like, I'm just hitting the button. I'm like, I really need to move on. Come on. So if you like chaos, you like craziness, and you can deal with the, the whatever is going on, you'll, you'll enjoy it. But it was, it was, I, I, it's a good game. I just wouldn't have paid for it. So the next game, I'm not even going to try to say the name. All I am going to say is The Drum Master. So here's the picture. Basically, it is kind of like Guitar Hero, but the Japanese version because it's the drum that's from Japan. And you can get the little uh, sticks in the drum if you want to, but I didn't. I just used the controller. This took me several months to beat because I play a few games, songs, move on, and then I come back. It's kind of like my racing games where I play a little bit, then I move on. So basically, it's songs you've heard of and songs you haven't it's anime pop everything you could think under the sun they've thrown in there and it gets very difficult like i played easy and normal and i got gold on everything just just to make sure that everything was good but it's very difficult on some parts some parts took me like a good couple days to get it down and then figure it out and then finally hit it but it's definitely worth a try i i recommend anybody if you, if you don't have Game Pass and you find it, like, the even I think it's on PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2, if I remember correctly, try it there. Have fun with it. You're going to love it. The next game that I played after playing the drumming game was called Road 96. This is a narrative-based game. It's got a butterfly effect. And basically, you are playing different scenarios. You're a teenager every time. You're a runaway teen. And bad things could happen to you. You can either get arrested... You can get killed or you can have something happen to you along the way where you get detoured or stuck. And the main objective is you have a little bit of cash and you have to keep your food up be because you, you're going to be thirsty and you're going to need food. So keep your food up. Keep your, your hydration going. It's just like a real like survival game, but for just teenagers. And watch where you go. Stay out of trouble as much as you can because in this scenario of the city, you are a runaway teen and you're trying to get away from the government who is corrupt and bad and they're just killing off people doing whatever they want to do and so you got a dictator you have to get away from and you can either a choose to stay here or b leave and flee uh for my story i basically just had every single teen flee there was a few that stayed but for the most part all of them got out and i think it was not a great ending but Hey, I made my choices and I lived with them. After that, I played Rock'em Sock'em Robots for the Game Boy Advanced. It's a fighting game. Basically, you are Rock'em Sock'em Robot and you have to battle through all the robots that are going to be put in front of you. It's just like a fighting game, really. You battle and you do combos and you get everything through and then when you get to the very end, you earn and unlock characters. I don't know how many. I just played it one time got through everything and got one character and then called it a day because it doesn't save on my emulator. So if you play it, it's an okay fighter. It's not great. So if you're just wanting something to chill and play with for like an hour or two, it's going to be your cup of tea. If not, it's okay. Next, I played The Walking Dead, The New Frontier. This is continuing the story for Clementine, but in a new view, a new twist. You're playing as a gentleman named Javier, and you are following their family, his story, everything that's going on. 
and you do meet up with Clementine. So you basically are Javier and you're going to a new settlement and you're trying to figure out what's going on and trying to keep your brother's family safe and everything that's happening. So I liked it, but I wish it was Clementine. I mean, being honest, it, I, I get what they're trying to do, you know, put a new spin on it, but it really didn't work for me. I liked when it was Clementine, but any other part, I was like, hmm, when's Clementine? I want to see what's happening with her. I want to see where she's going on because I've been following her for three, two seasons now. And I want to see where she's going, so why not just make it her? But they made a choice, and it's okay. But not one of my favorites out of all of them. After that, I decided to play another fighter, Tekken Advanced. Uh, this was actually the reason why I got my Game Boy Advanced back in the day. Uh, I wanted to play Tekken and a couple other fighters, and I also wanted to play a few Super Mario games. This was one of them. It's a Tekken game, it's a fighting game, nothing new. You already know it. If you've played Tekken, you know what it is. It's just limited to two buttons, so you have to get used to that. Once you get used to it, it's a good fighter. I recommend it. It's just like Tekken 3. That's the same style. I think it was around the same time, actually, as when Tekken 3 was out. This one came out at the same time. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but yeah, I think it was the same time. So definitely recommend it for anybody. If you have not tried it, find it. The ROM is everywhere to check it out. Next on the list was a little indie game made by one person called Tennis Story. Basically, it was made on the Unity um, drive. I don't, I'm not sure exactly how he made it, but he was telling a story. And the story basically was this kid, which was supposed to be the person telling the story. Um, uh, I th I'm guessing around middle school, high school age, where... They're going for a tennis gig and they want to be the best of the league, but their story changes and they have to make a choice on whether they help another kid or they help themselves. So I'm not going to ruin it because the game is pretty short. It's about an hour, if that, um, depending on how you do with the, I guess, the little mini games that you have to play. But I recommend it for anybody. It's free. You can find it on Xbox. Just go to the store, search for it, Tennis Story. And you just, it's, it looks kind of like Minecraft or Roblox a little bit, but it's just not, it's not for kids a little bit because of the storyline. But if you want to try it out, it's really short and you're going to have a good little sentimental story to look at. The fourth game that I played was called Pokemon Puzzle League. Uh, I played this through... I saw it was free finally on the N64, so I was like, why not just try it out? If, if I don't like it, it was free. So basically, you are Ash and the other group of characters from Pokemon from the original series. And it's basically like um, Bejeweled or whatever puzzle game, like Tetris, where you have to line up three character colors. And then it's a battle mode where you line up and you whatever you knock out, it goes to that other person and it drops little lines. Those lines, you have to do whatever that is and then clear them out. You want to be last, and that's how you works. You just you just want to be last. Is is basically battle mode. So you battle all the way through. Um, I don't remember the all of the characters, but it's pretty funny to see everybody battling and everything like that. So definitely recommend it if you like Tetris. If you like Pokemon, it's gonna be right up your alley. Next, after that, I decided to go with a Super Nintendo game, and that is Super Mario All Stars. It's the collection of Super Mario games, and I decided to play the original Super Mario. I hadn't played Super Mario Bros. in forever, and I was like, you know what? I never, I don't think I ever beat it on Super Mario All Stars, so I don't remember. And I was like, you know what? Might as well just try it and pop it and play it. So basically, um,. It's Super Mario Bros. You're Mario, you're looking for the princess, Bowser is taking her, and you have to battle him every time. And you end up saving Toads or whoever is at the castle all the time. Definitely worth a play. It is free if you do have Switch Online. You, uh, you'll you get it with your membership, so it's only 20 bucks, and you get a list of Nintendo and Super Nintendo games, so definitely try it out. And the very last game that I played for the month was as Dusk Falls, it is a narrative game. You basically 
choose and it's got a butterfly effect on what happens with everything that's going on. So you are a family and the family is traveling, ends up crashing the car, and there's a hold up at the hotel that they're at. They are getting robbed, so they have to see what happens throughout the story and whatever you choose could affect who dies or lives. So I got a few of my characters to, to live, but a few of them, I don't know what happened to them. So it's basically, you have two families. One family is a dad, a mom, and a daughter, and a grandpa. The other family is a group of brothers, and they all, their story intertwines. You have to see what happens, and you watch them grow up together in separate scenarios. And you can have people escape the cops, not escape the cops, depends on what happens, but... I enjoyed it, I had a great time, and I do recommend anybody who has Xbox Game Pass to try this out. It is worth your time. It's a fun story, got some sad moments, but it's very exciting. I, I, I uh, was moments of like, what's gonna happen next? I wanna, I wanna keep going, so. That is it, everybody. That is all the games that I beat for the month of July. I beat, drum roll please. I beat 14 games, so I am currently at 95 games. And so if you are keeping track, let me know in the comments below how many games you have beaten and what are your highlights for this month. And if you are trying to figure out where you're at and you don't know, just give me some highlights of the whole year of few games that you beat that you liked. If you are liking the content, please give this video a like. If you're new, check out a few other videos. I have a playlist at the end of the video, and I'll catch y'all next time. Keep on gaming, everybody. Bye. Yeah. Linda the real deal, gamer gal. Give her the crown right now, she's royale. PC, PlayStation, Xbox. A chest list stream definitely rocks. Nintendo Switch way back to arcades. Jump on the Oregon Trail and join the raid. Dungeons and Dragons reviews and interviews. This game and channel puts you in a good mood. She's making great content like all her funny skits. Homegirl shopping network and the gamer girl kit. Raspberry Pi to OG hardware. Linda's playing games everywhere. Linda the gamer gal. She's here, she's playing games. Linda the gamer gal.